<clears throat> you ever get hit with something like this? Whew. Yeah. Not good. Anyway. So, uh, as you know, I'm trying to show a, uh, a different perspective, and I believe in how we're reading our scriptures wrong. Um, and I came across yet another thing to support it. <clears throat> and you have to understand that um, I don't find anything that does not support what I'm saying except for people. Um, the words and the scriptures, they all align. I can't, I can't break this, uh, this thing. And little by little by little, um, I believe that all wisdom and knowledge and that truth actually comes from the Holy Spirit. It's revealed to you. <clears throat> and so, uh, I guess I feel as God's leading me bit by bit by bit. But like I say, it's uh, just very frustrating to me um, because this could go so much faster and easier uh, had I a few scholars that I could get on board that have spent their entire lives and know all the, the intricate details <clears throat> of what it is that I see from the, from the perspective of being an absolute moron. I'm, I'm, no, you know, I'm not a theologian. Um, don't let that, you know, please don't let that take you away as to think that I don't know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, when Paul referred to dogs, he was talking about people that are regurgitating the same food over and over and over again. And, um, or he could have been referring to people that can understand to have that type of love mentality that a dog does. Um, a dog is an amazing animal in that it's very strange in how much abuse a dog will take and still loves its, its master somehow. You see these pitiful dogs that are abused and that dog still loves the owner. It's, yeah. <clears throat> and God's given me one hell of a beating here and I still love him. But this is what I found. I'll read a, a few of the posts of it. Uh, the translation for rib in Hebrew, and it looks like sla in Genesis 2.22, justified. I find it ironic because my mom's birthday is 2.22. A lot of numbers uh, and patterns have special meanings to me, but says, why is it that biblical translators chose to translate the Hebrew word <clears throat> tzla as rib? And it could be tisela, tisa, tisla, tisela, tisela, sela. I don't know. Uh, why did they choose to translate it as rib when referring to the formation of Eve from Adam in Genesis 2.22? Never is the word translated as rib in any other scriptures except here. Some scholars believe, and it gets better further in the comments, this really sticks in my craw. <laughs> Some scholars believe that Adam was created both male and female, as denoted in Genesis 1.27, that God literally removed the female part of Adam his abdominal chamber. So why don't translators translate this word as chamber? Remember when Jesus said, your God is your belly? And Eve is the mother of all creation? A woman bears male and female as, a, as her offspring. <clears throat> um, Okay, so 
in I'm not I'm not gonna call it a theory. It's it's I know what this is, but in the way I come to understand these scriptures, the Son of God, Son represents the good or portion that God will keep or take. Because the Son of God, the Word, is doing what God wants, pleasing to Him, so He will accept it. He will take that, but He will leave the female portion. Remember when the giants went into the, the daughters of men? If Eve was taken from the abdominal chamber, that would be a daughter of man. So when the giants, the sons of God, went into the daughters of men, <clears throat> that was corrupting God's word. And literally then even talks about what happened to Eve. Can you see it? So you've got sons that are taken. And this is in the book of Revelation as well. When the woman has the male child. And that it is, you know, taken away to rule with an iron scepter. Because God's law cannot be broken. Um. Or as a daughter, then it would be waited upon by the evil. Uh, in the book of Enoch, it says that um, <clears throat> uh, when the when the sons of God did go into the daughters of men, what they bore was you know they will exist. It says that they will exist as evil spirits upon the earth, and evil is where everything comes from. It comes from the lesser than God. And then he calls it and draws it to himself. The darkness cannot overcome it, and so on. <clears throat> but uh, somebody here said, I would point out that the Hebrew text lends itself to the translation rib. The text in Genesis 2.21 literally reads, And he, the Lord God, took one from his side. Ahat took one, Ahat, from his side, Metella. And he closed the flesh after them. And the one would suggest part of the side, and after them, with a feminine plural suffix, would suggest that the one was originally among many others. The rib cage lends itself to this kind of language, and so the translation rib seems quite defensible. <clears throat> but notice one is taken and then the others are left. For those who are trying to say that tala means rib, I would point out that in no other place in the First Testament, in the First Testament, can you find it translated in that way. Oh, so he calls the Old Testament the First Testament. In every other context, the word refers to the whole side of a bilaterally symmetrical object. So literally to take something that is a symmetrical object and cut it in half. <clears throat> if the word was tala by itself, the most appropriate translation would be side. This doesn't, however, rule out a different translation. If the one here is in fact referring to a whole side, then God would be taking one side and leaving the other behind. One is taken, one is not. The only difficulty with this translation would be to reconcile the feminine plural suffix at the end of the preposition, prepositional phrase which suggests that more than one of this thing was left behind. So, there you go. <clears throat> um, this is so difficult. 
if anybody sees this video and you know of a theologian who is willing to speak to me on topic on this, um, please forward my contact information. Uh, phone number is 716-229-1343. I found a problem in our Bible and uh, it's causing us as a world to go at each other's throats. Um, we're misinterpreting these scriptures in a very, very bad way. Um, it's not to say that they're still not just as valuable, even in a corrupted sense, because that's what these scriptures are. They're a way to a path of righteousness and truth. But if there's any kind of pride inside of you, when you approach them, stumbling block after stumbling block after stumbling block, and we'll just, you will be literally, remember the, the word is called the sword, and so then you will be devoured by the sword. It doesn't mean um, somebody's going to come and chop you to pieces. Uh, it means that you will fall victim to the very word of God. And, and I always knew when it said that with, you know, with, with his words that he would fight his enemies, that there was something that we were missing and not understanding about this. And that's what I'm trying to show. But again, my, I'm Chris Masante, if you didn't get that from my channel, 716-229-1343. Um, I'm trying to contact theologians and authors, even people that are apostates that have moved away from, from the Christian faith, um, which is, I, you know, everybody's got to do their own thing. But what happens is, is, is most people study more and more of our history um, from a theological standpoint. What happens is, is the more information that they get, they're finding all these other parallels from all these other sources. And that's fine. But it doesn't mean that we stole from somebody or it existed first or something to that effect. We have to remember, Yahweh is the God of gods. So he would be like the God who stands as the, uh, the law for even other gods. And why, you know, you can say that you shouldn't worship other gods. Well, that's fine. You shouldn't worship other gods that you don't know. Because you will get to know them. <clears throat> but you will learn from what it is that you don't want to learn from these quote-unquote other gods. Um, when it says, you will have no gods before me, that's plain and simple. Um, you cannot have any other gods before God <laughs> because His law which is a law of love, um, stands in front of and uh, through which everything is metered. When Jesus said, I'm the door, that's the word of God. God's word is literally a door, a map um, that we don't understand. And in pride, we pick sides, this seed, that seed, enmity in the middle, and here goes your battle. Um, but I thank you guys for watching. Um, have a blessed day. Shalom.